Today's subject is an amazing animator, but also a very elusive one. Being more obscure, not much is known about his life before Disney, or about his life at Disney at all, for that matter. What we do know is what he worked on, and the impact he made on Disney films. So in this episode, we'll be focusing on that. However, if we find out more, rest assured that we will be revisiting this enigma of an animator. And who could that person be? Let's find out. Before we start, don't forget to check out our Discord server, and of course, like and subscribe. Eric Cloworth was born in 1920 in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Eric joined Disney in 1939, like many other animators, as an in-betweener, which adds him to our very special in-betweeners club. Through the 40s, he moved through the ranks. We know that he shared a room with Hal King in 1941, and he was an assistant animator for Wetzel Judge Whittaker. In the spring of 1941, he was among the strikers at the studio. To track Eric's movements at Disney, to the best of our ability, we will be using what is called animation drafts or script drafts. These are movie breakdowns, where directors assign an animator to work on different segments of each scene. It is good to note that although this is a decent way to see what each animator could have animated, it is possible that they didn't end up animating it. This could be for a number of reasons, including time limits, heavy workloads, or just clerical errors. For the purposes of this video, we will assume Eric did in fact animate everything that he was listed for. Even if we find out later that he didn't, we at least know that he was involved with it in some way. Are we happy with that, lawyers? Okay, great. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's move on to his first movie with an animation assignment, Alice in Wonderland. Although unaccredited and not listed in the animation drafts, he probably was tossed a few sections by neighboring animators. He most likely worked on ham lusk sequences like the smoke out the monster scene. Oh, we'll smoke the painter out. We'll put the piece to rout. Some kindling or some stick or two. Oh, there's a bit of rubbish ought to do. And from these small scenes, he very likely got promoted to animator for Disney's next film, Peter Pan. For this movie, Clueworth seems to have been involved with three scenes. First was Skull Rock, where he mostly animated Peter dodging behind the rocks and flying, as well as a few impressive close-ups. What a pity, Mr. Smee. I say, Captain, do you hear something? He also was involved in a couple of close-up shots in the pirate's capture scene, as well as a whole bunch of segments in the fight between Hook and Pan. Again, mostly action shots, Peter bouncing off of the rat lines, full-body shots of Hook challenging Peter not to fly, Hook sneaking up on Peter while he crows, and some of Hook running away from the croc at the end. Not to mention this wonderful shot of an alarm clock. You know, it's so funny. <laughs> you know, who would, who would ever be scared of a thing like that? <laughs> <clears throat> Ooh, it's hot in here. His next project was working as an animator in 1953's Ben and Me, and then on Lady and the Tramp. For this movie, Cloworth worked under Wooly Reitherman, who directed most of the action sequences in the movie. Cloworth animated a couple shots in the stray fight and the dog pound scene. He also animated some key moments in the rat fight scene. Rat fight scene? I see that every day in New York. His biggest contribution, however, was in the morning after scene, which he and Reitherman animated together. Yeah. Mm. So it is. I should have been home hours ago. Why? Because you still believe in that ever faithful old dog tray routine? Oh, come on, Pidge. Open up your eyes. All right, now we move on to the big guns. Cloworth is best known for his work in Sleeping Beauty, namely animating the magnificent dragon at the end of the film. The sequence was directed by Reitherman, but mostly animated by Cloworth. Grayson Ponty writes, If there was one thing Eric Cloworth knew, it was how to make something move correctly. Every action in his scenes is caricatured, but correct and completely believable. He often studied live-action reference material to make sure his movements and actions were correct. Here is what Kilworth told Charles Solomon about studying rattlesnake footage for the dragon fight scene in Sleeping Beauty. The dragon's motions have a ponderous reptilian grace that suggests powerful muscles moving a bulky body over the rocky terrain. The long neck and narrow head dart with serpentine fluidity. Thou sword of truth fly swift and sure, that evil die and good endure. Ah! 
101 Dalmatians saw Eric continue his affinity with action, seen in his animation of Jasper and Horace in the puppy kidnap scene. Yes, I said you're not coming in here. <laughs> oh, she's a regular little tartar, ain't she, Horace? <laughs> he also animated a lot of Pongo in the climax, final escape scene. He even was assigned a whole character. He animated all of Towser during the discovery of the puppy scene. <coughs> Tain't no gossip, Lucy. It'd be all the way from London. <gasps> you don't say. Hey, Fifteen puppies stolen. Well, there's no puppies around here. Not since Nellie's last litter. A and they're all grown up. Well, then, we'd best send the word along. It'd be up to me to reach the Colonel. <laughs> yeah, he'd be the only one in barking range. Well, you'll never reach him at this hour. Well, I can try. I'll bark all night if I have to. <coughs> 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 Around this time, Kilworth worked on a number of shorts. He was an animator and sequence director on Holiday for Henpecked Husbands and A Salute to Father. He also animated on The Truth About Mother Goose, Donald in Math Magic Land, and Goliath the Second. In Sword in the Stone, Clawerth was given a lot more scenes, namely the wolf in the beginning of the film, the introduction of Kay and Wart, and some very nice close-ups of a train. Clawerth animated the introduction of Merlin to Ector and Kay with Eric Larson, and he did Merlin in this scene with Hal King, animating Archimedes the Owl? Uh, who? Archimedes? Who? Uh, Archimedes, uh, would you mind sailing down there and... and uh... Not interested. Oh, come, 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 come. Now you're as wet as you can get. No! No, no, no! Archimedes, I'll turn you into a human. <laughs> you wouldn't dare. I will, so help me, I will. Well, all right, all right, all right! All right! <laughs> it works every time. <laughs> Just like magic. He also animated a lot of the tilting practice scene with John Ewing. Wait for us! as well as a couple of shots of the castle drawbridge and moat. He did Merlin dancing gleefully, directing the dishes during the Hittigus Fittigus scene, and this interchange between the two. But I'm supposed to do it. No one will know the different side. Who cares as long as the work gets done? <laughs> Aside from a few shots during the scene where Wart becomes a squire, Clawerth's major scene was during the kitchen battle. He worked alongside a handful of other animators. However, this clip is listed as just his work. For The Jungle Book, Clawerth animated mostly the elephants. His longer sections are during the elephant inspections. It was then I received the Victoria Cross for bravery above and beyond the call of duty. Ha! Ah, ha! Those were the days. Discipline. Discipline was a thing. Bill's character. All that sort of thing, you know. It, uh... Oh. Oh, well, where was I? and the argument between Haiti and Winfred when she finally puts her foot down. Now just a minute, you pompous old windbag. Winifred, what are you doing out of ranks? Never mind. How would you like to have our boy lost and alone in the jungle? Our son is alone. But Winifred, old girl, that's an entirely different matter. Huh. Different. He also animated this very impressive scene of Sher Khan running away from fire. <laughs> Unfortunately for Aristocats, an animation draft isn't readily available. Hold on, hold on, but, but before you unsubscribe, before you unsubscribe, here. We do know that he worked a lot with the Hound Dogs, Napoleon and Lafayette. Please stop throwing things at me. He also has a few writing credits for Aristocats, Robin Hood and Winnie the Pooh, and Tigger 2. 
as well as an animation credit for Winnie the Pooh and the Honey Tree. When I up, down, touch the ground, it puts me in the mood. Up, down, touch the ground, in the mood for food. Despite initially retiring in the 1970s with his Disney stock options and having a long and comfortable retirement in Morro Bay, Clawerth returned to help animate the television shows The Wuzzles and The Adventures of the Gummy Bears. Shh! This way! Hey! Anybody there? No. Oh, all right. Wait a minute! In 1984, Clawerth worked on a series called DTV which were music videos using a combination of popular music and footage of vintage Disney animation. He also worked on Popeye the Sailor, a revamped Pink Panther show, and Richard Williams' The Thief and the Cobbler. Yeah, no, that seems like the, the feather in the cap for your career is when Richard Williams says, hey, why don't you come work on my masterpiece? Like, I don't know, I can't, I can't think of a single greater honor. Clawerth passed away on December 10th, 1999. Clawerth was a magnificent animator with an impressive portfolio. He animated in various low-key and high-key animations for around 40 years. Though his elusiveness has prevented us from truly knowing this impressive animator, I believe I can say with certainty that he was a loyal, dedicated hard worker and his work has and will last through the ages. Yep. <clears throat> yep. <laughs> well, all right, I gotta go. Bye, everybody. <sighs> Thank you for watching this episode of Dizographies. Don't forget to check out our Discord server. And if you liked the episode, click the thumbs up button below. And if you want to be notified when the next episode comes out, subscribe and click the bell. Comment below with characters you would like to see us cover. Further reading and references are linked below. We hope to see you in another Dizography.